Hey, do you want to legally steal some shit? I'll show you how. Okay, Julian, so what do you mean by legally stealing some things? Well, I'm talking as a songwriter right here, right? Because I want to help you guys as songwriters to make more music. Songwriting can be very scary, right? Because you open your recording software and there you go. You're greeted with an empty page. Then you go into your head, nothing there. You look around, no inspiration. What can you do to start a song, to force yourself to start a song and not get lost? Me, as a guitarist, usually I grab my guitar, I play my guitar a little bit and sometimes a cool melody comes up and the song starts taking some shape and everything flows and everything is beautiful and I have a song by the end of the day. But sometimes that doesn't happen. You're just there with your guitar and everything that you sing sounds horrible and you start going into these crazy jams that never end and you're jamming and there's like one minute solo, two minutes verse, an outro and oh my god, God, I'm so lost. What can I do? I don't know. This song makes no sense. Nothing connects. It's so crazy. You need structure. You need structure. And although I do like to jam like any other musician, sometimes when you're making a song, I am a big supporter of deciding on your structure early on. That's exactly what we're going to steal from other songs today. We're going to steal structure because you cannot copyright structure. You can also not copyright chord progressions, drum grooves, and a bunch of other little things. But today we're going to start with structure because I think structure is the perfect jumpstart to keep you inside boundaries and make you write a full song that makes sense quickly and efficiently. So how do we steal structure from another song? Well, it's very easy. First, you got to go listen to some music. Listen to some music and just find a song that you really, really admire, right? Like, I love this song. I wish I could write something like this. Well, that song has a structure, right? And if that's a famous song, that structure is proven. It works. It's nice. It played on the radio. Everybody loved it. The structure works. So if you have the same basic skeleton for your song, you have a pretty good chance that your song is also at least gonna have a strong structure, am I right? How do I steal the structure? Well, I'm gonna show you guys this in Ableton Live, of course, that's what I always use, you guys know me, right? But you can do this in any DAW. So I found a song that I really like. In my case, today, it's my own song, Lemon Drops. I'm sorry, I cannot use a famous song by another artist because I don't want YouTube to slap me with the penis of the law. So we're gonna use my song, Lemon Drops. The first step in order to steal the structure and the vibe of that song is stealing the BPM of that song. Why? Because if you want to write a similar song to that one, probably you want to stick around the same BPM, right? Later on, you can kind of push the BPM a little bit farther from that song. But if you want to do something similar to that song, copy the BPM. You cannot copyright BPM. So copy it. How do you copy the BPM of a song? Well, there's this nifty little website called TuneBat. Com. And if I search any song there, I can find the BPM. As long as that song is released, like it's on Spotify, you will find the BPM of that song in here. So if I put Lemon Drops, Julian Grimm, like this, here's my song because it's on Spotify. Go listen to it now. It tells me the key, which might be a nice information for you. So you know it's on a minor key. So maybe if you want to keep the vibe of that song, you might have to write on a minor key. But also it gives me the most important thing that I need right now, the BPM. It's at 132 BPM. So let's put that in Ableton right here, 132 BPM. Now I know that my song is going to be at the same speed of the other song that I like. How can I copy the structure easily? Well, you can just listen to the song and count the bars and write the structure down, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but there's a super visual and easy way to do that in a DAW, which is like this. You get the MP3 of the song that you like. You're going to have to buy that, download that somewhere, get the MP3 or the WAV file, it doesn't matter, any audio file and drag it in to your session like this. Now, if tunebat.com was right and my BPM is correct and is the same of the song, if I turn on my click here and play the song, it's gonna be on time, right? No, that's a mess. Why is that? It's because usually when people release songs, they don't cut the beginning of the song right to the right bar. There's a bit of a tail there in the beginning and in the end. So the song is not gonna perfectly be dragged into the right place inside Ableton. So how can you make it go to the right place? Well, the easiest way is just to find the easiest kick that you can find. So this is a pretty easy to see kick right here, right? So what I can do is just cut everything before this kick like this and zoom in close. And now I see kinda where the kick is hitting and I can drag this back 
to the beginning of a bar like this so bar 21 you see it's not perfect but it doesn't have to be you just have to be close enough you know because you're not gonna use this song on your song so it just has to be close enough so when you play the song it's kind of on time with the click so you can drag the beginning back here so it's the whole song right just check but visually everything looks kind of in place right if you go to the end of the song again like this all the way to the end everything still seems quite on the grid so remember put the right bpm in drag the song that you like into ableton drag the easiest to see kick that you can find to the grid and hopefully that should align your song to the grid now if i play with the click on pretty close it's close enough but why did i do that well remember i'm trying to get a visual and easy way to steal the structure of the song now that the song is inside ableton live i can just start using markers to mark where each section goes so i listen to the song and i put the markers and name the sections accordingly to the original song so let's say so this is the intro right here. So there's this little button enabled on right here called set. If your playhead is on the right place right here and you press set, you put a marker here and you can press command R or control R in PCs to rename this marker to intro. There you go. And then you continue listening to the song and find other sections. Here we have a little riff, so I can put like riff here. Guitar solo comes in, so another marker right here, guitar solo. And just continue to listen to the song and find the sections and name them in Ableton. So here we have the verse, one. Here we have the chorus. And just do that to your whole song. I'm gonna do that quickly, like I'm gonna fast forward for you guys, but do it for your whole song. So there you go. I named all the sections of the song and I have them so visually clear inside Ableton Live. It's so easy. So now I can just mute this track or you can even delete this track and forget about it. You don't want to completely copy the song. So now you have structure. So now you can grab your guitar or you can start dragging loops, start programming drums into this structure. And this is going to be like a map to something that you already like. So there's nothing wrong with the structure. And now you can songwrite within these limits. And having these limits are always a good thing when you're songwriting. Because unlimited possibilities sound nice, but they will drive you crazy. So having limits when you're songwriting, it's always a good thing. You know now how long your chorus have to be, how many verses you have, how many solos. You have all that ready for you. You don't have to think about it anymore. You can think about only the fun part, which instruments, the melody, the chord progression and all that stuff. And of course, this is just a kickstart, right? This is just a kickstart. Let's say you're still a little bit stuck. You're just, okay, I have a structure, but what do I do now? I don't know. I don't know. Well, this is the time where you got to be careful not to copy the original song and start listening to other songs and start pulling things from other songs. So maybe get a chord progression from another song that you like. Get the drum groove from another song that you like. Get the idea of having an acoustic guitar on the verses from another song. Get the bass sound from another song. Start pulling things from other songs. And if you have a voice inside you, they will start molding into your way of playing, your way of singing, your way of composing. And in the end, you're gonna have a song that has nothing to do with the original song that you copy the structure of, except for the structure. But who listens to a song nowadays and thinks, hmm, that structure is exactly the same as the structure of that other song, man, I'm sure they copied it. All songs have basically the same structure nowadays. There's no danger, no danger. As long as you don't completely copy one song and you learn how to be inspired by multiple songs and you learn how to use limits and you learn how to critically listen to things, 
you're gonna be able to start songs much easier. I hope this video was useful for you guys because I think figuring this out, it was a big game changer for me. I could get better at writing songs for other artists. I could get better at writing songs for me that don't sound like everything else that I've already done. It makes me more creative in the end. Even though it gives me a limit, it gives me limitation, it makes me more creative. So I really enjoy this process and I hope you guys do too. If you like my channel, you know, please subscribe. I'm doing my best here to get to 3000 subscribers before my birthday in July. So please subscribe to my channel. You know, if you have any more questions about songwriting, Ableton production, music production in general, gear, you can always book a Zoom session with me on my website. You go to my website, there's a way to book sessions there with me and you can ask me any question that you want. So go to my website, check that out. Please press all the buttons around me that help me in this world, especially the like one. I really need YouTube to start liking me. I really do need it. So please press like and I see you guys next time. Bye.